Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and while I wait for the great uh, new DX expedition that is uh, the KH1 um, Baker Island team that's heading out uh, shortly, I thought I'd give what hopefully will be a series of talks, this is just the first one, so let me know in the comments what you think, um, basically about what I do, or one aspect of my day job, which is fixed wireless. So I thought in the first video what I'd cover is what is the difference between fixed wireless and Wi-Fi. Now it's a very interesting question because you definitely note that the people um, selling fixed wireless as an internet product, they definitely call it fixed wireless. You don't see fixed Wi-Fi thrown around. Um, so they, there is that sort of distinction. But what is the real distinction? I think that's probably the question on a lot of people's minds and certainly one thing we you know, do get asked from time to time is, if I have fixed wireless for my internet, do I need to have a Wi-Fi point? And the answer is yes. Um, the fixed wireless is not a substitute for your home router. It's not a substitute for your Wi-Fi point. Um, it's a way of delivering the internet to you over, I guess, what you call the first, first mile, um, which is an industry term for basically from where the fiber ends um, to your house. That's what fixed Wi-Fi is. It's a way of delivering internet from um, a fiber splice point to your house in a fast and reliable manner. So anyway, that's I guess the application difference, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the hardware and how it does or doesn't vary. Now, as some of you may know, if you're around long enough, um, you used to have these things called microwave links and Microwave links, so, uh, well, hold give me a second. You, know, you had a big dish like this, and um, the dish was sitting on your building, and it was aimed at a, a point, probably in the local city, uh, CBD, and you got your two megabits or whatever, and, you know, this was back in the days of, um, you know, uh, what the well, Americans used to say, T1 lines and <laughs> all those sort of things. Frame relay, I think, a little bit more here in Australia. Um, or E1, who was our specification following the Europe Europeans. So, um, you know, that's what you used to think of as a microwave link. Now, is the fixed wireless of today different? Absolutely. The what used to be called microwave, uh, a microwave link, was all based on proprietary technology, very proprietary technology. Um, every vendor get, had their own standard. It wasn't interoperable equipment um, and that sort of thing. It certainly wasn't like Wi-Fi today where you know, you can pick up a Samsung tablet and connect it to an ASUS router and, and that sort of stuff. So there was that that's sort of the history um, of fixed wireless is in the microwave days. And that was dominated by people like Motorola with their proprietary technologies. Nowadays, it's different. Um, you do still have big dishes like this. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about in future videos when you use things like this. Um, but the, the uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is the the difference now is that fixed wireless compared to the microwave days, um, in order to make fixed wireless, I guess, the hardware affordable, I mean, you used to pay big bucks for a microwave link. It used to be a tremendously expensive proposition. In order to make it um, fixed wireless affordable in that first mile, what companies are like Ubiquity and um, Canby and, 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 you know, the others, Microtech, those sort of people, what they did, the little startups, and I say little because they're, you know, listed on the NASDAQ now, some of them, um, is they used an off-the-shelf off the consumer wireless chipset for the physical layer, something like a Broadcom or an Atheros, um, you know, the chips you have in your Samsung tablet or your iPhone. They used those devices, which were designed originally for Wi-Fi links, and then they put a little bit of proprietary technology, not much, but just enough, around them in order to change the application and make them better suit the application. Um, so you do you do still have interoperability concerns with fixed wireless. Um, Cambium stuff doesn't readily work with Ubiquity. Um, Ubiquity's, uh, I guess, proprietary extensions called AirMax, they don't work with just your standard 802.11ac radios, for example. So there is a little bit of proprietary stuff there, but because they're using a very high volume um, physical layer um, design, I guess, uh, an industry standard that's sold in you know, millions or billions of units, the cost has come right down. You know, a dish like this one, 
oh, look, they're about 100 US dollars now, give or take, uh, depending on your model. This is actually a 2.4 gigahertz disk a uh, dish. The only difference, uh, uh, you can convert this to a 5 gigahertz dish. All you need to do is change the feed horn. So, and I guess that really segues, I guess, into what I guess the first main difference between, aside from the application, that's obviously the difference, but the noticeable differences between um, fixed wireless and Wi-Fi. So if we start off with Wi-Fi, used to things probably you would have had the typical Linksys router, you know, the little blue one with the two ears. I mean, they even used it in South Park. Um, but you used to have, when you first started off, a router, um, you know, flatter and squarer than this, but you had these two antennas. Um, and your typical Wi-Fi antenna is omnidirectional. It's very low gain. It's basically got, you know, the typical big donut pattern that, um, you know, that uh, cloud burning, um, cloud burning dipoles or dipole low to the ground tends to have, or, you know, your typical isotropic radiator pattern. Now, these things are really just designed to spew RF all over the house. And I must say that the early 2.4 gigahertz units, the um, added to 11B and G, they did a really good job of punching through walls. Didn't deliver very high data rates, didn't like multiple clients, but they did a great job of punching through walls. Then along came the next generation of fixed wireless stuff, your 802, uh, sorry, um, Wi-Fi stuff, your 802.11n and your 802.11ac. You started seeing gear like this or routers like this, no visible antennas whatsoever. And a lot of people, you know, they plugged them in, they're excited by the new speed gains and they noticed um, the signal just didn't get as far. You know, when you used to have a router with two visible antennas, it used to cover a whole house. The new um, Wi-Fi device, your Wi-Fi router with no visible antennas, it didn't quite cover a house very well. You might have needed a, an extender or something like that. You can you see them all the time, uh, Wi-Fi extenders on the market. I think they're rubbish, but um, I'm just hardcore. I'd rather cable another point up and put on the roof. Um, these devices are very, very good at delivering data very, very quickly to um, your, your mobile phone. But when you're talking about 802.11ac, um, you're talking about really wide channels. You're talking as in 40 megahertz, 80 megahertz. You're talking about using the five gigahertz band because it's the only place where you have space for those wide channels. And you talk of, you're talking about mounting them or putting them in a location where you've got line of sight to your device. That's how you get the most out of um, wireless. So you, which is essentially you use a high frequency, you use an omnidirectional antenna, very low gain, and you basically want to be able to see see the router from your device or have a wall in the way or, or not too much. Fixed wireless, on the other hand, is completely different. When you talk about fixed wireless, your most basic antenna is going to be a big collinear like this guy. I'll try and get that in the frame. That's a, I think it's something like a 12 decibel collinear. Um, uh, omnidirectional uh, antenna. It's only polarized in one direction. This one's actually a bit broken, so I can show you the insides. You can see there, there's a bunch of collinear elements. Very simple in construction. There's some great articles on the net on how to make these. Um, and, you know, if you're like me, a radio amateur, a bit of a geek, you think, well, can I strap this to the roof of my house? and use my mobile phone down at the shopping centre? Well, I had, to, I had to find out. The answer is, if your mobile phone's only about five, if your shopping centre is about 500 metres away, sure. Other than that, um, this has, as I said, about 12 decibels a gain. You, you, your mobile phone, it just doesn't have a big enough antenna to go the distance. So they're the two differences between, while, uh, I guess the two main differences between fixed Wi-Fi and wireless. And that is the types of antenna you're going to be using, the size of the antenna, the gain of the antenna, and the directivity of the antenna, and the distances you're going to cover. If you want to go the distance, if you want that 20 kilometers or, so, or something that the fixed wireless vendor talks about, you're going to have to do something like this. You're going to have to have a horn, would say a, this is a, I think a 14 decibel antenna. Um, shooting RF out towards your house on a big tower and at your house you're going to have to have something like this dish. 
and you know di the dish is going to face the the towel, which is distributing from the uh, distributing the fiber across the first mile, and it's doing that maybe over in this typical example using this sort of equipment, you'd be going I guess five to ten kilometers max. Um, I've delivered fifty megabits over twelve kilometers quite easily, so it is it is possible. It really depends on the height of your distribution point, but you know, that's the sort of stuff you're going to work with when you're talking about fixed wireless. Different antennas, different distances. You know, and it, I mean, you can really just boil it down to application. Um, one is to do, I guess, the application of fixed wireless is to deliver the internet to your home, and the application of Wi Fi is to deliver um, wireless throughout your house, uh, Wi Fi throughout your house to devices like your mobile phone. So, you know, if, if you want to look at it as simple as its application, if you want to look at it in terms of what are the practical differences, chipset, almost the same, antennas are going to be different and the distances are going to be different. You know, you're going to have to align those antennas properly. They are going to be higher gain. You're not just going to be able to throw it in the corner and hope it works and that sort of thing. So anyway, if you want to hear more about um, the fixed wireless stuff I do in work and learn a, a, well, a lot more, I guess, um, about the different technologies, uh, physical layer stuff, uh, what's called on the OSI model layer one, um, is I'm um, very interested in. Uh, had a lot of experience with stuff like ADSL, VDSL, um, Doxis, um, all kinds of different technologies. I'm a licensed cabler. I'm now doing a lot of fixed wireless stuff. So. If you're interested in hearing about the different modulation technologies, um, all the stuff that we should be pursuing as radio amateurs. I mean, in a lot of ways, as amateurs, in terms of modulation, we are stuck in the 70s and the 80s. We're, we're not doing, you know, our packet radio is 4800 board or, or 9600 board. It's just, it's nothing. It's nothing compared to what's, what's out there. Um, the new FT8 Fox Hound mode, is um, really interesting in that it has, uh, I believe it can have um, multiple carriers in that you can, uh, a fox can reply to multiple hounds at, the, at one time, that's pretty cool. But we're really stuck, I guess, in the 80s. So if you are interested in hearing about what's going on in the commercial world and what we need to do to take amateur radio out of just um, SSB phone um, and that sort of thing and you know embrace some of the commercial uh, stuff. Um, let me know in the comments. Tell me whether you're interested in hearing about fixed wireless. Tell me if you're interested in hearing more about Wi-Fi. Just whether you're interested in the technology, the um, the applications, the real world differences, how it applies to ham radio, all that stuff. I'd love to know about it. So yeah, I hope this has been interesting. I hope it might have answered a few questions. And just yeah, just let me know what you want. This is Jared VK3BL saying 73 from Rate My Radio, and I hope you enjoyed a little bit. Uh, learning a little bit about what I do in my day job. Cheers.